Welcome back. Today we will be addressing this eyesore. This big old issue full problematic pain in the butt. So in the previous video I mentioned some way to fix this but in a way that would be To others it would seem harder, but to me it seems like a, uh, a needed challenge. So let me give you a little, a little back, back story on what's going on here. So if you see here, this is sitting lower, this is sitting higher. The way that this support here has completely well, it's not attached on this side, but for some reason, it's pushing up on this side and pulling down on this side. So what I want to do, and now hear me out, I want to remove this whole hinge here, this whole bracket, and I want to make it a side opener, kind of like one of the old the old hearses. I would open up like that, except I want it to open up this way. So the idea is you have the handle on this side, and you push the button, and you go, and you open it up, access to the inside, you close it. But another thing I want to do is I want to change out the back window. There are um, back windows for the square back that it has a whole window that opens up because you know sometimes you're in a tight space and you go to open this thing up and you, there might be something in the way or maybe you just want to drop something inside lift up the window drop your stuff inside close it you're good so that's the idea so now i need to first of all figure out how i'm going to do it measurements of, of the back door, excuse me, the back door. And the idea is to have the handle on one side. So I just measured the standard door handle. Um, so the idea is to use a similar mechanism to keep the door locked or latched. That was my quote fingers with my middle fingers, latched. Um, and then I would have hinges on this side. So I found, I don't want to use standard door hinges, but there are these, these type of, of barrel hinges. I think that's what I saw them called. But essentially you have kind of like this, and then it fits into just an empty cylinder in there so it drops in there you have your lubricant your you can hardly see it lubricant in there um, and that way it would just drop in and pivot on there some I've seen they have like a, a brass bushing here um, brass um, this would just be Deal. 
Now these just come as this alone. So you have the top portion and the bottom portion. And it's so you can weld stuff onto it. So you have your blah, 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 blah. That's, that's my weld because you know me, I'm not that good. And so then you would have your steel stock here. Stock. And then you would do the same on this side too. Blah, 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 blah. Nasty weld. And then stock. So what I'd end up doing is mounting, let's say, this one to the door. And then this one to the actual frame. That way, if I wanted to at any point in time, I could actually just lift the door off. Because I'd have two sets of these. I'd have, um, they are, I believe, three inches in length. So I'd have one set here. And then probably not at the bottom. Probably also not at the top. But I have another set here. And that way, they would have a, a decent area to hinge. Now, I have seen pictures of Hearst doors, because the only examples of these style of doors are pre-1950s. Um, they look like milk vans, milk trucks. Um, but the other option, or other versions I've seen in, in modern cases were with hearses. And you will... Uh, I will include a picture here. Now, the way that they did it is they had just connected to the lower side of the door and it hinged in similar to how the hinge is in there now, except it goes sideways. I don't really want to do it. I want to do it more like the milk truck, this one, and have the hinge on top and bottom and be able to have it that way. Now, to really get it lined up properly so it hinges correctly is going to definitely take some trial and error. Um, when I get the the actual hinge pieces um, then I can start doing more um, practical design work and less hypothetical um, and really get down to what I want to do. Now I'm thinking because there is that trim, I wouldn't say it's a trim, but there's that overlap of sheet metal to where it seals, sorry for the squiggly lines here, um, but essentially it's so you have your door seal behind it to seal the whole thing. I think I'll bring the hinges in to here so then that way they'll just hinge directly on that point rather than coming out um, and another thing I'll do is actually remove the door and get rid of all the hinges and everything. That way I can stick the door in there the way it's supposed to be in there. Because right now, given the condition of the hinges, um, it is not closing properly. So I'm going to remove the hinges, those hinge arms, and then I can see how it's supposed to sit in there. So, took the liberty of removing the wires. They were fed up through here and up through there, and that's for the license plate light. Pulled that out, wasn't too hard. Not too bad shape. Same with there's a panel in here that I took off. Looks pretty good on the inside. Um, and same with the, the heating channel or the, the window defroster mechanism that was easy enough to just pull out. Now what I'm going to do next is we'll pull the door off. Now if all goes well when I pull this off, it's not going to... First and foremost, the springs that are in here are not under tension by any means. So 
they were, I wouldn't have to use a broomstick to hold open the back door. Ta-da! That's how you do <laughs> Well, nothing shattered. Let's be honest, it's not a restoration. I gotta keep reminding you, it's not a restoration. It's a restoration. So, as you can see here, this thing is super tension that over time, as this was beginning to rust, that it just started pushing through all that decay, and now it's pulling on the whole roof itself. So, next step is to eliminate this hinge right here. Ta-da! Off camera I took the arms off of here. There were a couple of those little little pinch pins and, and then just the, the bolts going through. Be able to do that without having to cut it off. Easy enough. Didn't want to bother too much with cutting it. Because it seems like these, I wouldn't say they're arms now, shoulder joints, I guess. They're, they look semi-structural, like they, they could be. I'm still deciding whether or not to keep them or to just cut them off and then fix up this back, back top portion. There is a little bit of decay in this corner. Nothing that won't be too invasive. But on this side you have a full. It's, it's in bad shape. It's in pretty bad shape. But what I want to do is definitely get the roof so it's in place, so it's not detached anymore. Um, and then work on getting this as close to the way it's supposed to be close to because once I get that close enough then I can get the rubber the door seal put back in new fresh one not putting this back in that's useless so my lovely assistant here mrs. Manley she just gave me a good idea and she said to have a hinge placed at the bottom and then one sitting out at a length. That way, when it's opened up, that it would pivot more at a lower level. And it wouldn't be as much of an angle, and it'd be a little bit more easy to manage. So if I can figure some way to either have it hinge out there or to just strengthen it enough that it can hinge from the bottom. I'll have to think about it. Okay. Well. 
that'll be all for today. If you have any ideas on on how to allow this side swinging door to function, um, leave it in the comments. Send me an email. I'll put my email in the description if you want to do some doodles and, and send some some doodles to me on uh, on what you think would be the best way to tackle this this conundrum that I've put myself into. Um, but let me know what you think. I've, I haven't seen it done before. Do a, a hearse door, a side swing door. I'm not really sure what the official term is. Um, but to have a third door, even though hatchbacks are considered three doors high. I don't know. I don't know. What, what do you think I should do? What do you think I'm doing wrong? What do you think I should do to improve it? Or if you think I'm doing a great job, let me know in the comments below. And in the next video, um, it should be time to take care of those back fenders to finally see, to put the final puzzle piece into the puzzle that is this rusty old car. I'll see you then. Stay rusty.